This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In this video, we're going to look at some issues with the database and data within the database. For the tutorial, I planned a couple of errors, a few errors, so that we could see what issues came up. But I've got to admit that there are a couple of errors that I simply made that we now need to fix. But that's okay because as you're going through this tutorial, making errors and fixing those errors is a great way to learn. So we're going to use the SQL update command and a where clause to modify some existing data in some of the rows of a table. We're going to add a constraint to the employees table for a unary relationship. This is a relationship between two columns in a single table, a table that is related to itself. Then we're going to remove a column from a table and then we'll re-import the data dictionary to see how it looks after we've made these revisions. Keep in mind the things that we're doing here are at the database level. That means they happen in the database itself. So any application that uses the database is going to be impacted by what we do. So don't think that because you're making a change to the database while you're working with a particular application that it only applies to that application. All the applications in Apex that we're working with, we have a production and a developer application, are looking at the same tables and the same data in those tables. So I'm logged into Animal Shelter as one of the developers. I'm going to start the developer application and I'm going to run that application. I'm going to go up to animals and I want to add I want to add an animal. So I'm going to select the report and then if I want to add an animal, I would click on create. What I'm going to do is add a feline and I'm going to put in the primary color and it is a mixed breed. It's female. It's available. House trained Yes. Spayed or neutered? Yes. I'll just make up a chip number and then I will put in the estimated date of birth. I'll select November 5th, but I'll change the year to 2015. Right now, all of the breeds listed here are for dogs, so I won't implement anything here. Then I will pick a file. and click Create. So when I go back to Application Builder and go look at the data in the object browser, or actually I'll go to SQL Commands. I'll open that in a separate tab. Let's see what we have. I wanted to add something that was not a canine. So if I want to look at the data, I'm going to do I'll use distinct, so I only see a particular category once. And this is from the animals data, the rows we already have. And we see down here we have dog, canine, and feline. When we created the static LOV for category of animals, we designated dogs as canines. So I need to take any row that says dog and change that to canine so we have consistency for the animal category. I wanted to make sure that I also had at least one other category. I wanted to illustrate that you really should use a WHERE clause when you're using an update. Let me do a quick count. Let's do a select count from animals just to see total number of records. Run that. We have 53. If I do a select count from animals where category equals feline and run that. 
we have and run that I had a typo we have one how many already say canine instead of dog one so we have a total of 53 rows we need to change 51 of those rows because the rest of those if I come in here and change that category to dog and run that we see we have 51 rows so when I make that change when I do update animals set category equal to canine where category the data that it currently has is equal to dog then it will change 51 rows so let me run that and it says 51 rows updated you almost always want a where clause so that you don't alter every single row in a table that's a pretty dangerous thing to do you could mess up some of your data unintentionally if I click on SQL workshop do a right click open up object browser look at the object browser go to animals I'm now seeing under the data tab I'm seeing canine if I advance to the end I'm seeing that I have my feline that we added in a form just a few minutes ago now this won't be an issue as we go forward because we've added LOVs so people will make changes to the data based on the list of options we give them the reason we had to make this change was we had existing data before we built this application so we had some inconsistency here we have another issue because what I want to do is let's see let me first bring up the data model and point out that we actually have what we call a unary relationship I have a relationship between two columns in the employees table the supervisor ID is the employee ID of someone who's supervising this particular employee record so SUPV underscore ID has a value that comes from another row in this table for another employee and their employee ID but we have a data consistency issue here in that we've already got some data that we've added and this is actually just based on a mistake that I made when we created the LOVs earlier let me come back to object browser go to employees go to constraints and do a create and this is going to be an employee supervisor foreign key constraint so this is a foreign key constraint the foreign key comes from supervisor ID move it over as it relates to the very same table employees and imp ID when I click next and I click finish I get an error message I have a record based on an erroneous LOV when we added Felipe Parra in the previous video we chose a particular supervisor but when I created that LOV I used the wrong field I used the purse ID instead of the imp ID we'll fix that in the form in the next video but what I want to do right now is go to employees and I want to go find Felipe so let me go to the data and I'll do and I'll do a query I'll look at all the fields well I can probably find him by begin date but I'll go ahead and actually come to persons do a query here first and the first name is Felipe whoops it is case sensitive let me do a new query here's Felipe so his purse ID is 90156 come back to employees do a query 90156 is his purse ID run that and here he is I'm going to edit this and I'm simply going to remove the supervisor ID this is the wrong number it should have been a five a five zero zero number 
So right now I'm simply going to delete that and apply the change. Once I've done that, then I can come to employees, to the table, or to the constraints, and try this again. I want to do imp supervisor foreign key constraint. The foreign key will be supervisor ID and it will be related to the same table employees for imp ID and I'll click next and finish and I can do that now. So the fact that I got that error message is just another reason why we like the DBMS. It is enforcing referential integrity. If we can't create that constraint, we already have data that is not correct. So we have to figure out where the error is and fix it. The problem is with the mistake I made. It is not in the DBMS or what I'm trying to do with the unary relationship. So we've added that constraint. The other thing we need to do, and I talked about this in the previous video, is, uh, let me see, call up my data model. I said that zip ID, which would have been a surrogate key, I decided after the fact that I wasn't going to use that. I was going to have one table where we didn't use the surrogate key, but then I didn't follow through when I was writing my scripts to create the tables. So what I want to do is come delete zip ID. It actually has no purpose in this particular table because we're using the actual zip field as the primary key. We see that here with the one. So now what I want to do is drop a column. Be very careful about doing this uh, because it can break other things. But I'm going to drop zip underscore ID and click next and click finish. I can look at my data. I, st I still have the zip code, the city, state, and state name. But if I come back to my application and run that and check on data maintenance, if I don't have a form yet for the maintaining the zip code data, we're okay. But if I had a data maintenance form and I dropped that field, I would probably need to recreate that form. What I'm doing at the database level can break something in the application itself, but it looks like we're okay. So the last thing I want to do is I'm going to start up SQL Developer and I'm going to re-import the data dictionary so we can see that unary relationship. I'm going to log into the Animal Shelter Schema, go up to File, Data Modeler, Import, Data Dictionary, I will be using my animal shelter schema. And I won't include the lookup, so if it says lookup, I'm not going to include it. I'll click next and finish. And I'll move the diagram around a bit so it's easier to read. So now we see that the zip ID field is gone from zips, but more importantly, what we see is we have this unary relationship where we have a primary key of imp ID that relates back to a foreign key of supervisor ID. So we've modified this. So I'll do a file, data modeler, print diagram, and print to a PDF so that I have on-file documentation of the current version of the database. 